Right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline or CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by J.M. Ryerson, who is in an equally sunny Boca Raton on the far coast, on the east coast in Florida. How are you doing, J.M.? Uh, John, I'm doing great, brother. It's so good to be here. I appreciate you having me. And it's a beautiful day here in Florida, as I'm sure it is in California. So, yeah, absolutely. And JM is a founder, uh, as a founded leader, JM has built and successfully exited two companies, created your own financial personal freedom. And then you have developed the Let's Go Win process and authored two books. So, there's the Let's Go Win, and then the there is Champions Daily Workbook. I don't know if you have the Let's Eat a book there to show our our audience. There you go. Let's go win. Excellent. And what we're going to talk about today is how to show up as you, or why you should show up as you. And as my uh, as my compatriot from Ireland once said, Oscar Wilde, so eloquently, you know, should be yourself because everyone else is taken. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so, so Jim, what do, what do you think it is today that prevents people or is inhibiting people for showing up uh, as, as who they really are? You know, John, it's a great question. And I, I think it's just something that, uh, we've been conditioned to show up as things that we thought we were supposed to be, whether I'm supposed to look a, a certain way, sound a certain way, act a certain way. And the truth is the greatest shining light that you have is just your authentic self. And for years, it's, I think it starts early, about fifth, sixth, seventh grade, somewhere along the line, start to put on those masks and you put those on and then you start to forget some of who you really are. And the problem is, is when you're not your authentic self, you're just a shell of yourself. And it takes so much time, so much energy you're out of alignment. And when you do those things, you can't show up as the best version of you. So something I love to talk about, John, with my clients is just finding that authentic self, bringing it back out, because it's in there. All of mm -hmm. us have it, but remove some of those masks and just really allow yourself to come out, flourish and, or flourish and thrive. Yeah, and and, the, and one of the things, yeah, you know, Right now is uh, so authenticity has become such a big buzzword lately, right? And people are going, oh, you have to be more authentic. And the more people say things like that, the more inauthentic it sounds. It's like, how do you, you don't, you can't become authentic. As you said, you have to remove the masks in order to bring out your authentic self. But a lot of people are now saying, oh, you know, authenticity, be authentic. And it's coming off as quite the opposite. Yeah, it's interesting. Obviously, we're coming through such an interesting and challenging time mm -hmm. with COVID, I think a lot of people got some quiet time and started to figure out, hey, I really am not doing something I love, which unfortunately mm -hmm. that's created some challenges, right? In the workforce, maybe sure. not as many people being uh, able, staffing wise and certain things. But the great news that I have found is because people did get quiet, when they started spending time on themselves, really taking care of themselves, when you get insightful, when you really look inside and you're like, what do I want out of life? What do I want to bring to this world? When you find what that is and you're able to really pursue it, the world wins. You win, mm -hmm. the world wins, everybody around you starts to win because again, it just, it doesn't take much energy to just be you. And this is the best example I give, John. I'm six foot five, okay? It takes zero time, zero energy, my back's in complete alignment at six foot five. I could tell you I'm five foot five and with enough time, <laughs> enough energy, I could probably even look that way. My back's out of alignment. It's really not very comfortable, but I'm five foot five, John. And it's, that's kind of what it feels like when I watch people not be themselves trying to, to, again, my example is the way I started in the workforce. I thought I had to look a certain way and it was so much effort once I chose to just be me, JM, whether you like it or you don't, people on this mm -hmm. podcast, they might not like my voice. I can't change that, but I'm going <laughs> to give everything I can and hopefully it helps some people. But for me, it's just, it's easy. This is who I am. I'm going to give everything I can. It's just such an easier place to come from. Well, it is, isn't it? Because I mean, if you're yourself, then you don't have to worry about 
you know, how I'm coming across, like how, oh, I have to put this mask on, that mask on right now. Um, but the other thing I think, uh, I agree with you about the pandemic. I think it was fantastic from a point of view, if we have silver linings from a point of view, is it forced some introspection? But unfortunately, we also live in a, a world where the pervasive culture is all, I mean, it's all, you know, with social media and all of this, like it's all, it's all image, it's filters, it's all of this thing. So on the one, we have these two, if you like, you know, conflicting positions where on the one hand, there's people who are trying to really discover who they are and be more thing, And then the rest of the world who's just being completely fake. <laughs> well, here's the great news. If you do social media, which whether I'm not sure. going to say it's good or bad, it's mm -hmm. a great platform if you choose for it to be. It's a really awful platform if you choose for it to be. So what, what I've found is if you want to just put yourself out there, which takes a lot of courage, a lot of vulnerability. Here's, I'm not going to burst anybody's bubble here, I don't think, but some people aren't going to like you. That's just the way it is. <laughs> you put your very, but you could be Mother Teresa and you are out there and they will skewer her about, I don't know, she's short, she's this or that, even though she is a saint, she's literally this, this woman that brought so much love to the world. And the point is, you have zero control over that person's opinion. You have zero control over it. So why do you allow that to really bother you in any way, shape, or form? If your intention is to be your best self, if your intention is to give back, to serve your audience, to serve your customers, and to give it your very best, that's, that's all you can do. You cannot change how someone feels about you. You always put your best foot forward, of course, but if they don't like it, that's okay. And once people accept that, I think that's, John, when people find some true happiness is I'm trying my best. I'm My intention is pure. And some people just don't care for it. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I, think that's a, I think that's a really important point to, to underline there, uh, Jam, because I do think that that, that is the downfall. I've seen this in, in, in business over the years and or companies I've run and all that coming up through companies. I, I think that's the biggest downfall for people is when they are so fixated on being liked or being perceived as being liked by everybody. And, um, and I, to your, to your point, I always found it extremely liberating to just go, yeah, some people will like me and some people won't like me and some people will be indifferent and, you know, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's just an energy saver at the end of the day. I, if you have a lot of control issues and you're trying to control their narrative, <laughs> you are going to run yourself ragged. But if you just, you control what you can control, which is ourselves, right? Which is the way we show up. Uh, the way I show up on the show, the way I show up with my kids, the way I show up with my spouse. Uh, that's the only thing I can control. I actually can't even control my spouse's behavior. <laughs> I may want to, but the truth is I can only control me. And that's the whole idea of showing up as you is let's focus on you first. So for instance, when I work, especially with females, and, and it, this happens, I'm generalizing, of course, but I'll say, hey, what are you doing to take care of yourself? And they'll tell me about the job, the house, the kids, the spouse, the dinner, the cleaning. I mean, the list is long, John. And then I go, wait, wait, remember the question is, how do you take care of you? And mm -hmm. that list, they've forgotten to take care of themselves first. Well, the problem is there's a real shelf life on that, how they can show up as their best self they, if they don't take care of themselves first. So it's a simple formula. It's literally take care of your mind, your body, and your soul every day first, and then go take care of your spouse, your kids, your job, your your task list that we all have, but you have to take care of yourself first. It's actually the most unselfish thing you can do rather than some people are like, oh, that's selfish. I have to take care of everyone else. No, you need to take yeah. care of you first so you can be your best authentic self. Yeah, I mean, you think about it in, in sports. Can you imagine if you were running around before a game and you were having to do all of these things and whatever, and then by the time you took the field, you were completely exhausted and useless? <laughs> And that's the idea, right? I mean, th that's exactly what's happening. It's they are unable to show up to that game and be the themselves because that that's not what they're prioritizing. So it's mm -hmm. such an interesting, it's really is kind of a mind 
twist, if you will, because I'll tell people the most selfish thing that you're doing is not taking care of you because long term, that's not going to work. You yeah. can't be your best, whatever hat you're wearing. So I need you to just slow down. What do you want? What is really important to you? It's like really basic questions. What do you want? Why is that important? How am I showing up today? And here's a big one, John. Is the story I'm telling myself today serving me? Yes or no? Mm. And if that answer is no, brother, it is time to flip that script. Let's change the story because it's all a story that you've created for yourself. I don't care what your parents, grandparents, <laughs> brothers, friends, spouses, I don't care what they told you. That was yesterday. You get to choose to write your story every single day. So is that story serving you? And if not, let's change it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the other thing you mentioned there earlier, and I know it's in your book, I think it's chapter one of your book, is vulnerability. And, and sometimes when people say that, it's delivered in such a way as that it comes off as a little bit, I don't know, a little bit, maybe some people equate it with weakness, maybe other people equate it with being a little bit, I don't know, well, that's a little bit too much, you know. But So explain vulnerability from your point of view. Yeah, brother, I love this question because, again, I'm a kid from Montana that was taught that boys don't cry. That's that's what I grew up with, which, by the way, is terrible advice, okay? I don't care if you cry or you don't, just be you, and if you feel mm -hmm. like you need to, great. But <laughs> for me, vulnerability is, that's just who you are. That is, if I'm feeling hurt, I could do two things. I could go ahead and stuff that way down, John. I'm feeling hurt, but I'm not going to show the world. So let's stuff it. So eventually it's going to blow like a volcano. This hurt, this pain, this angst, all this is going to blow at some point. Or I could say, you know what? That hurt. And I'm just going to, I'm going to be very vulnerable about this. I'm going to tell my partner, I'm going to tell whoever my friend is, you know what? When this action happened, my feelings were hurt. Guess what? You're actually now communicating mm -hmm. how you're feeling instead of later reacting in a way that's going to be not the most effective manner. <laughs> and again, I will generalize men. We stuff so often. It's like we stuff it and you just put on the happy face and everything's cool. And then there's this huge like blow up. And it wasn't about not doing the dishes. It was about the fact that you've been hurt before about this you've been told that you you're a failure about that and you never express some of these emotions so for those of you uncomfortable expressing that verbally the best form piece of advice i can give you is just to write about it write about your experience write about how you felt that day was it a good day was it a bad day why and the paper will not say anything it won't say john you're brilliant it won't say john you're an idiot it's not going to say anything. It's just going to accept the pen to the paper and it allows John to get his thoughts out. And if that says I was hurt, at least he gets to release that out from it just going around and around in our head, which is so often what we do. And we just spin ourselves up into this thing. We create this story and it's like, whoa, what happened? You just got your feelings hurt. <laughs> it's not this bigger thing, but we do it all the time. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love the point you said there, though, about, you know, however you were raised or whatever. I mean, I grew up in Ireland. We're the same. You know, we don't, you know, we like to keep things down on the down low. And we don't, you know, but it would not be, it would not be authentic or whatever of me to suddenly start to be this, you know, a hyper emotional or whatever person. So, and I think that's the point, because I think sometimes people make the, or get confused and think vulnerability and all of that means that you have to somehow become this emotional basket case when you don't because that wouldn't be you if that's not who you are no 100 percent. i love that you said that because it's so true look there's no right way or wrong way mm -hmm. and by the way the closest people to you that are like hey you need to be x you don't need to be anything but you now again let's make sure our our intention is is pure mm -hmm. let's make sure we're not intentional about being a jerk right yeah. then maybe we should look at our behavior but if your intention is to be a good person and someone is offended by the fact that you didn't cry at this part of the movie mm -hmm. it's like look again you can't control their feelings but if you just allowing yourself to feel to actually put mm -hmm. it onto paper if that's what you need to do or just express it that's the main thing brother i just 
I want to see people come out of their shells and stop burying themselves with all these things that they've heaped upon them about the way they have to be, the way they have to sound. It, we don't have to be or do anything. You just have to be your best, your best self. That's it. And guess mm -hmm. what? Really good things happen because you have more energy. You have more time. You are truly in alignment. And that word alignment is really key because when we're talking, you said culture earlier, when you're mm -hmm. talking about the culture that you fit into, look, it may just not be the right culture, the, the right relationship, the right job. That's okay. Find your alignment with what, which one is and watch how much you flourish in that environment. Yeah, no, because obviously, conversely, if you find yourself becoming less and less and less recognizable to yourself, you know, then you have obviously gone in the opposite direction. Yeah, and it's not a fun place to be when you look in the mirror. And I, I can't tell you how many clients have done that. And they've said this exact thing. I don't know where I went. I don't know where I lost myself. And I'm like, you never, you're never gone. It's in there. We just have to find some time to bring it out. So again, this is the part that scares people. Sometimes you just have to get quiet and ask yourself, what do I want? Why is that important? Is the story I'm telling myself today serving me? And if it's not, let's change it. Those three really basic questions will bring some pretty profound answers. And that's when the real vulnerability, the real courage, John, is to say, okay, I didn't like answers number one and two. So I'm going to go ahead and act in opposition of what I have been because if what if what I was doing before led me to this unhappy place or this place that I'm not feeling fulfilled, I'm not being myself, we're going to have to create some new habits, some new routines, some new actions, so we don't get to that same place again. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that about the routines, et cetera, and having, you know, practicing it. There's one other thing that I just wanted to highlight from, from your book here, and that is humility, because I, we, we live in it. We live again, um, and I'm making sweeping generalizations, generalizations too, but we live, we live in a world where humility seems to be a lost art to a lot of people, because it always seems to be about, we always have to puff ourselves up. We always have to take credit for everything. We always, you know, in this, in this hyper competitive world that we live in, but but humility is such a powerful it's such a powerful force, to, and it really touches people when when you when you're genuinely humble. You know, the best analogy I can give is I, I think of a five year old at a birthday party. Now, let's say that five year old is at that birthday party, and there's zero friends there, but it's all about them. We're celebrating me, but there's zero <laughs> friends around. Or I go to a party surrounded by 20 of my best friends. Now the party is in my honor, quote unquote, but I'm there to celebrate it with all of my friends. That's humility to me. That's mm -hmm. sharing in the joy in the party. You, you will become more center stage by giving off recognition to everyone else by making it not about me. It's a very attractive quality. And John, unfortunately you're right. In this highly competitive environment and world, so often people are like, I did that, I did that. But the truth is, no one did it alone. And if you share that love, it's it's a really radical concept. If I share how this person helped me along the way, which we're all on teams, right? I'm on a yep. team with my wife, I'm on a team with my coworkers, I'm on a team with so many people. And I even my individual athletes, I tell them, I'm like, look, you're the one performing on the court but how many people did it take you to get there? Your nutritionist, your coach, your weight trainer, your, your parents. I mean, there's so many people on your team. And if you share in that love, just imagine how much more there is by giving that credit to the 20 people around than if you said, yep, it's all me. That's all I get. That's just not a great place to be in. And unfortunately, the shelf life for people that have that, they, don't, they lack the humility, We've we've seen historically how it ends. It's not positive. No, no, absolutely, no, absolutely. And just one one last thing I wanted to touch on is again, it's another one that I think it's thrown around a lot is the mindfulness piece, and you know, it's, it's a whole mindfulness industry. It seems to be that's blown up everywhere. 
Um, in fact, my my poor mother, God rest her, before she died, one of the comments she made was I said, oh, I'm back in Ireland. She was like, oh, I'm so fed up with all this mindfulness stuff that people keep spouting. But what is, for, for you, what is real mindfulness? Because again, I think it's not something everybody understands. And it's it's being presented not always correctly by some people. Yeah, it's really, I, I, it is fascinating how it has become the buzzword. It's definitely mm-hmm. this hip idea to be mindful. Look, they've been talking about it for th- 2500 years Lao Tzu was talking about it the Stoics were talking about it we've just people have put it as you have to be a yogi or you have to (laughs) meditate no mindfulness is very simple staying in the present moment and I will I took from Lao Tzu I just made a little more simple (laughs) for me anyway past is pain future is anxiety present is everything If you can remember that, if you can, not all my memories in the past are painful. That's not even remotely the case. Mm -hmm. But if I'm thinking about, oh, John, you know how great it was back then? What am I saying about my present state? It sucks. (laughs) And if all I'm thinking about is, oh my gosh, all these great things in the future, I'm saying the same thing about where I am today. So the whole thing with mindfulness is just staying present, Mm -hmm. having and giving your very best in this present moment and then watch your life just continue. It's like a snowball rolling down the hill. When you're present and you're giving everything you got, well, guess what? Then good things are happening, good things are happening. Then your future becomes very bright and your memories are bright as well. So to me, it's just staying in the present moment. Yeah, no, I, 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 that's so perfect. And I think another compatriot of mine, James Joyce, the writer, I think he said something about, you know, when you live in the future or the past, you're living at arm's length from yourself. I love and, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that and and the other thing then, um, the, the 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 other part about it too, again, is you know being present. Unfortunately, I mean, how many times have you seen? Have you had a conversation with somebody, and they suddenly there's a ding on their phone, and they glance down and they read it right mid sentence, and you're looking at them, you're going, do you realize how rude that is, and how you have just shown that whatever I'm talking to you about is not really that important because this thing, and it could have been a spam text for all, you know. I mean, that's one thing every one of us can relate to. We all, if you have kids or friends and you're at dinner, we've all been there where you all of a sudden don't matter. And that phone, that ding, that, that, and it fires off this, this like endorphin for them. Like, Oh, I got to check it. Well, no, actually you don't. You, that message I promise you it's not that. And if it is that important, somebody else's phone will ding, 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 ding. If it's that important, but it's like, it's such a thing, John. And I don't mean to sound like the old fuddy duddy where it's like, you know, stay off your phones. Look, that's, that's not realistic, but to a same degree, if I can just be as I am with John right now, I have other stuff going Mm -hmm. on, but guess what? Right now I'm going to give everything I got with John and I'm being fulfilled. Hopefully I'm rewarding some people on the other end. But man, it's, it is a tough environment. And so we have rules in my house. It's like at the dinner table, put them away. And, and they yeah. know the repercussions if they don't. <laughs> yeah, we have that too. My wife enforced it. So I have to give credit where credit is due. She even had to do it with me. And I had to modify behavior as well. So, which is, again, I mean, I'm not, you know, don't ever claim to be perfect. There's a lot of the things we talked about that have been things that, We've all had to address over the years and actually come. I think self-awareness is the greatest gift you can give yourself, to be perfectly honest. I, I couldn't agree more with you, brother. I love self. I think that's that that is a great way to wrap, man. That is that yeah. it is. We all need it, right? We all need that perspective and self-awareness. So that's beautiful, John. Absolutely. Well, listen, everybody, JM's information, all of it will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do, JM. Uh, thank you, brother. Uh, so Let's Go Win is my fourth company, uh, performance uh, leadership mindset coach. I love what I do. I love the podcast, Let's Go Win, the writing. There's free uh, articles on the website. So I'd love for people to connect with me at uh, Let's Go Win 365 at any of the social media platforms. And John, thank you, brother, for having me. You're an awesome host, and I I really enjoyed myself. Yeah, me too. Thank you, JM. And don't forget the book. The book is called Let's Go Win, The Keys to Living Your Best Life. And the other book, hang on, it's gone here. Well, you can tell me the name. Champion's Daily Playbook. And that's that's how I help Champion's Daily Playbook. Yeah, perfect. And both books are behind you there. Listen, thanks again, JM. Thank you all for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon.